greeting everyone. I am Dr. Deependra, and I welcome you all in today's connect session with Professor Anil Dal sir. And uh, today sir is uh, uh, going to uh, discuss the uh, treatment modalities of the previous uh, case uh, we have discussed. Uh, as we all know that uh, uh, since last three sessions, sir is discussing a case of uh, pediatric leg swelling, which is a uh, diagnosed as a case of Ewing sarcoma. So sir has uh, beautifully demonstrated in last class how uh, he has planned for the treatment and how he has uh, planned for oxygen. So after this, uh, uh, today sir is going to discuss how to fill this uh, uh, defect. So one of the procedure is tibialization of the fibula. So today mainly sir is going to discuss uh, the modalities is the tibialization of the fibula. Uh, so I think this talk is definitely going to help you a lot. Uh, so without any more delay, I welcome you, sir, on the board, and I request you to start your discussion. Now it's over to you, Professor Anil Dal, sir. Thank you, Dr. Dipendra. Uh, I'll just share my screen. Okay. So Dr. Dipendra has al already given you the background for this talk. Uh, students, you will recall that in the last three sessions, we have been discussing a case of uh, Ewing sarcoma of the leg. Primarily, the tibia bone was involved. And in the in last session, we showed you how after chemotherapy, the tumor had uh, shrunk in size. And uh, uh, this was the, this was, these were the x-rays. And on your left hand side, we have the pre chemotherapy x rays showing an extensive osteolytic or destructive lesion in the medullary canal uh, with corticomedullary destruction and with a laminated type of periosteal reaction. And on your right hand side is uh, this, the same child's leg after several cycles of chemotherapy, where you can see that. Uh, the picture is totally changed. The tumor seems to have regressed significantly. And this is the time when we decided to do an excision, do an excision of the lesion. And uh, uh, this is uh, the, the surgical slide of this patient where we had last time showed you that we had... Uh, uh, the, the surgical steps I had shown you. And this is the, the diaphyseal segment, almost eight centimeters in length, which we had resected along with the tumor tissue and along with the biopsy scar. And this was the resultant defect post-operative x-ray shows that there is an extensive diaphyseal defect now in the tibia. The biopsy report showed us that the entire tumor bed was free of any tumor now. So the margins were absolutely clear. And uh, two cycles of post-operative chemotherapy have also been given. And now we are planning to reconstruct this defect or the gap which is there, a diaphyseal defect or a gap, eight centimeters long. And you can see that the fibula is acting as a strut here. It is not allowing the gap to, or the, or the two bones, the two ends of the bones to come together. It is sort of maintaining the length. So the options which we discussed last time in an, in the interactive session uh, uh, with two boys were are listed here. We could either do an Ilizaro's fragment transport operation here. You could do a corticotomy in the metaphyseal region proximally or in the metaphyseal region distally. Or you could do a bifocal fragment transport with a with a distal osteotomy as well as a proximal metaphyseal osteotomy, moving both the segments simultaneously to achieve closure of the gap quickly. 
this was one of the options the second option was an intertibio fibular bone grafting now what is this intertibio fibular bone graft it, it is very simple through the posterior lateral approach which is known as the harmans approach maybe some day we will discuss that also but today it's not the subject so you expose the 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 tibia and the fibula uh, proximally and distally by two incisions okay a proximal incision and a distal incision posterior lateral approach and across the interosseous membrane you put grafts cancellous bone grafts so that there is a synostosis achieved distally as well as proximally so this is known as the intertibio fibular bone graft the next option is that you take a free fibular graft from the contralateral side the normal side fibula take it as a free graft and you put it in the intervening space between the proximal and the distal end of the tibia the fourth option which we discussed was what is known as tibialization of the fibula uh the next option which requires a very high degree of uh, expertise uh meaning thereby that you have to be conversant with the microvascular anastomosis technique wherein you can take a vascularized free fibular graft and then interpose it in between the two uh, uh, in between the two uh, fragments of the tibia and last but not the least is an allograft the option of an allograft well the option of an allograft uh though it seems very attractive and lucrative but you must remember that it is a massive diaphyseal graft allograft and it has to derive now its blood supply through the host bed and get incorporated into the host skeleton so it's going to be a 2 to 3 years uh a process where by the process of revascularization then osteoclastic resorption and osteoblastic bone accretion which is also known as creeping substitution it would slowly get absorbed we did discuss that since the, our patient is a child tibialization of fibula would probably be a very good option which can be performed by an average orthopedic surgeon there is no requirement for a specialized microvascular team here and anybody anybody who is well versed with orthopedic techniques could do this procedure now what what does it mean it simply means that you transpose the the fibula diaphysis of the fibula of approximately the same size or slightly larger than this 8 cm defect so what it means is that you osteotomize the fibula distally somewhere here somewhere here and proximally somewhere here and then this segment which is now like a it's like a segmental fracture or a segmental osteotomized diaphyseal segment you transpose it or you push it medially towards the tibia and you create a little raw edge of the raw, raw lateral edge of the tibia distally as well as proximally and then you hold this transposed fibula onto the tibia by transfixing screws both distally as well as proximally the idea is that the the fibula will get united side to side to the tibia and once this patient gradually starts wear, weight wearing initially in a cast then in a brace the fibula because it is the child's fibula is going to hypertrophy 
it is going to increase in girth and ultimately you get a very strong bony bridge across this tremendous gap which has been created by the tumor resection so this is the philosophy behind the tibialization of the fibula well what are the what are the indications of